Hello everyone, my name is Peter Liu. I'm one of the pediatric gastroenterologists at Nationwide Children's Hospital in Columbus, Ohio. So today we're going to talk about pediatric fecal incontinence, which is also just children who have stool accidents. So this may not seem like a big, important topic, but in reality, for as any parent with a child who's had, who's had this problem can attest to, this is probably one of the most devastating problems a child can face. Having stool accidents, especially at school or in front of their friends, and it's really not just a medical problem, so it can lead to embarrassment, bullying, school avoidance, and a significant decrease in a child's quality of life. I think another big challenge is, you know, no one wants to talk about it, so kids absolutely do not want to talk about it, and even parents too, it's hard to really talk about it with other families. So it's a, it's a, it's a problem that can, be, can have a huge impact on a child's life, but can be hard to detect. And just to kind of clarify, so, we're not talking about just any kid who has a stool accident. This is when you have a child who is at least four years of age developmentally, who is having stool accidents on a fairly regular basis, so at least once a month. So fecal incontinence in general in children primarily falls into two different categories. So the first is what we call retentive fecal incontinence, which is also called encopresis. So that's when there's stool built up in the colon and there's overflow or leakage of stool, uh, sometimes around like a, a, a larger amount of stool. The second type is called non-retentive fecal incontinence, and that's where kids just have issues holding on to stool once it gets down to the bottom of the colon, or when they just have balance in, an, in inappropriate places. So we'll talk a little bit more about how to differentiate those two types. So first of all, the, the vast majority of kids have what we call retentive fecal incontinence. That's also called encopresis. And that's where the, where the stool accidents result from underlying constipation. So when stool builds up in the colon, especially in that last part of the colon, as it builds up, it can stretch out the colon, making it harder to sense when small amounts of stool leak out or fall out. And so we can have stool accidents, sometimes just smears or leakage of liquid stool or sometimes small pieces of hard stool. And we'll often hear that kids have trouble uh, detecting when it happens. They say, they say they can't tell when it happens, or they can't tell it until it's too late, or um, they can't tell until someone else smells it and points it out to them. Um, so the treatment of that is really treating the underlying constipation. And so, you know, some clues that, can, that, that, some clues that might tell us that it's that type would be other signs of constipation. So, for example, having stool accidents, but also uh, intermittently having really large hard stools that are difficult to pass or having abdominal bloating or having abdominal discomfort and pain and so the treatment really begins with treating the underlying constipation first with generally laxatives to clear out the colon to kind of remove that blockage and then after that oftentimes the doctor will recommend uh, using like doing a toilet program or keeping a bowel and diary or using laxatives daily to keep the colon empty so it doesn't build up again and so we don't start to have accidents again. Um, you know, the other type of fecal incontinence, non-retentive fecal incontinence, is much less common. Um, sometimes that can result from uh, abnormalities of the nerves or the muscles at the last part of the GI tract or at the muscles around the area of the pelvis. Um, sometimes that can be from congenital abnormalities, so abnormalities that kids are born with, including things like an anorectal malformation. But the vast majority of kids who have non-retentive fecal incontinence, about 95%, don't have an underlying medical problem. Um, oftentimes in, in, that, in those cases, it's more likely in younger kids, kids who have behavioral or psychological issues. Uh, it can happen after a big life event or a stressful event. Um, in, in those kinds of scenarios, the treatment is a little bit similar in that it, all, it often begins with uh, a toilet program, keeping a bowel and diary, sometimes using medications, but especially for kids who have behavioral or psychological issues, the involvement of a, a GI psychologist is critical. So um, in summary, so there's really two different kinds of reasons, like big categories for reasons for why kids, who have, kids have a stool accidents. And the first, the most common is retentive fecal incontinence or encopresis. That's where constipation is leading to overflow and stool accidents. Um, and then a smaller group of kids have non-retentive fecal incontinence where it's just hard to hang on to stool so we have accidents or it may be related to a behavioral issue. So your doctor, whether it's a primary care doctor, the pediatrician, or the pediatric gastroenterologist, 
can help differentiate between those, those two types and get the appropriate treatment started.